Hello, my little shadows. We are back with another story. This is The King's Queen by Zero Zaking Zen. I'm sorry if I butchered that. Anyway, let's get on with it. Chapter 1. The Queen has returned! The royal god announced as they pulled the gates open of the castle of Sina. Midnight stallions pulled in a black cage adorned with acoustic craftsmanship worthy of a queen. There in front of the palace doors I stood, watching the carriage pull in. I, Yaren Ager, am not fond of my queen. He rarely converses with me, and the only time we stood side by side was when both of our presence was needed. That applied now. Two years after we were wed, our relationship never progressed. We are nothing but strangers. Arranged marriage was not a new thing, but I thought that maybe, just maybe, the things would work out for us, but sadly, I couldn't force what I wanted. Even on our wedding night, Levi said it bluntly and clearly that he didn't want anything to do with me after that night. I didn't mind. I'm too busy running the country. It's better that way than to dwell on our non-existent relationship. Queen Levi took a twip to the mountains with only his knight, Edwin, and his lawyer servant, Hanji. The queen loved going out to the hot... I thought about the idea of buying the whole establishment and presenting it as a gift to him to make it clear that we were not going against each other and committing treason. It was only that time when I saw my queen's blank face filled with color as a tint of pink spread across his face while he quietly said his thanks. I stared at the carriage as it stopped. It was a tradition for the king to greet his queen when they returned from a trip. Even though I cared less for my queen, I couldn't help but wonder what it must have cost the extra week. Levi should have traveled for two weeks. Then I received a letter that they needed to stay in the vacation spot for an extra week due to an unexpected weather coincidence in the location. I doubted that I would get an answer. My queen tends to keep to himself all the time and that was no longer new to me. The servants lined up at the sides of the entryway, and all of their heads were bowed. I didn't draw my attention on rumors, but, but believing that my queen was not nice to everyone was a given. Your Majesty, John, my lawyer servant, spoke out of his worry. He knew how cruel the queen was, since he experienced it himself. Seeing his Majesty Levi return sent a shiver down his spine. It's all right. I watched blankly as the carriage doors opened. The Queen of Sina finally stepped out. His beautiful robe moved gracefully with him, as well as his waist-long raven hair that complemented well with his snow-white skin. The air carried his scent, and I savored the sweet vanilla scent. It was a natural reaction. I was bonded to this Omega, and it pained my Alpha to not be able to lay his hands on it. But I am the king with dignity. I won't force my queen into bed to satisfy my needs. Queen Levi stood in his perfect beauty, a male omega with a pure blood line. Yet, his cold nature and harsh treatment of everyone outweighed his beauty. But there was something different. I narrowed my eyes at the queen as he approached me. The raven's body language was different, and his cobalt blue eyes held something that I couldn't honestly pinpoint. Then Levi smiled at me, a pure smile, and the next thing I knew, I felt the little Omega's arms wrap around me, pulling me into a gentle hug. I froze. I'm back. Levi looked up at me with another smile. Levi's point of view. Where am I? Who the fuck are you? I shouted as I forced myself to my feet. I woke up and discovered that I was in a forest full of corpses and two people I never knew were covering me. My queen, calm down. The one with thick glasses on her face spoke and scooted closer to me. Get the fuck away from me. I screamed as I slapped her hand away. Hanji, another person, a tall as fuck with brushy eyebrows. Stop the shitty glasses. Let's give him some space. I stared at both of them, catching my breath. I wonder where well Falcon and Isabel were. Who were these people? And more importantly, how the fuck did I end up in a forest with these two? My eyes slowly moved to the chaos behind the two, and instantly, I started vomiting. 
I have seen a handful of gruesome sights in my life. For some reason, my stomach flipped on its own. Your Majesty! I couldn't hold back my tears as bile arised in my throat. When my stomach finally settled, I wiped my lips with my sleeve, but then noticed the quality that the fabric I was wearing. What I wore was very expensive looking robe, and there was blood, a lot of it. What the fuck? Did I fight tooth and nail for this shit? Yes, I like pretty clothing, but this is one fits for a queen. I was pulled back from my thoughts when the giant blonde gathered me in his arms. I was immediately tense, feeling my body reject the touch of another alpha. Ugh! I screamed, trying to push out of the blonde's hold. All I wanted now was to rip Eyebrow's hands off of me. My inner Omega instincts had a strong urge to call for my alpha. Wait, what? Your Majesty, forgive me. I'll be taking you a much safer place. The blonde tried to explain as he ran. Put me down, you fucker! I screamed, feeling my stomach knot up with excruciating pain. When we reached a good distance away from the mess, the blonde alpha put me down. Finally, I can fucking breathe without the needle stabbing my skin. Get away from me! I warned while my hands stretched out for the knife or something in my robe. But your majesty, the one with the shitty glasses tried to approach me. I said stay away! I screeched and panted. My body grew heavy and my vision started to blur. That's when a drop of blood landed on my hand. I reached up and over my forehead, I saw my palm was coated in blood. I, I, I barely gasped out when nothing but darkness greeted me. Hanji's point of view. After a few hours, I had tended to my queen, wrapping a bandage on his head before swapping his blood-strained clothes with clean ones and forcing him to drink some medicine. Hanji. Over in card, he watched the queen laying motionless on the blanket. I knew he felt horrible for not protecting his queen enough. Oren was a knight, and he was aware that an ambush was welcome at every corner, but we didn't expect to be outnumbered. Our queen didn't remember us, I pondered. One of those bandits had hit his head hard. It's possible that his majesty has amnesia. No, that can't be. It's very possible based on his reaction towards us, but we'll never know how bad the memory loss is until his majesty is awake. Don't worry, I'll put some herbs that will calm him in his medicine so we can have a straight conversation with him. I assure the knife. I must inform the king. No! I stood up, not until I know how much damage has been done. And another thing is the bandits. Those bandits, Oren recalled. It's not a robbery, for they are after the queen. It could be that they were spent by another world. Yes, I noticed his majesty. I explained and turned to look down at the queen. I saw his eyes grew wide in recognition when the bandits revealed themselves. Are you saying that his majesty might know who sent those bandits? Orwin asked. Every month we returned to the mountains with a hot spring tour, but during those times we rarely encountered an ambush. I could be wrong, but two years of serving our queen, and I know he had a lot on his mind, but never uttered a word of it. I poked up when I noticed my queen's fingers switching. Your Majesty! I quickly sat next to him. Where? His Majesty blinked at us, noticing that he was much calmer than before. I figured that the drug must have taken effect. So I quickly helped him sit up. My Queen, please drink some water. I took the cup from Oren and offered it to him. His Majesty drank the cup until his last drop. Your Majesty, how are you feeling? Oren asked, kneeling in front of his Queen. With his head down, a silent act of forgiveness for not protecting him during the ambush. A bit shitty is all. The queen breathed out while I and Edwin blinked at him. We were not used to hearing the queen using such vulgar language. It was quite shocking and scandalous. Your majesty, can I ask you what year it is? I gently prompted, uh... 1245? 
And the fucko you call me, your majesty. My queen glared at me. I stared at him and covered my mouth in shock. There's a possibility that Queen Levi's memory was back to when it was four years ago. My queen, it's already 1249. Owen explained. What? His majesty tensed before grabbing my shirt and pulling me close. What the fuck is going on? He demanded. Your majesty, please allow me to explain and help you. I begged. It paid me to see my queen this way. Yes, his majesty might be cruel and cold towards everyone, but he treated me and Owen with respect. It was not the best, but I know that there was something good in him, and maybe today I'll have my answers. I, 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 okay. My queen breathed out. Exhaustion was written on his features. I could tell that he wanted to keep arguing, but the drug keep pulling him back to a relaxed state. Your Majesty, we were ambushed on our trip, and one of the bandits hit you in the head. Hanji said you have amnesia. Oren explained, please forgive me, my queen, for I have not protected you. My life is in your hands. The knight took his sword and offered it to the raven. What? Levi gaze shifted from the sword to Oren. Owen, you're not helping. I hissed at him, turning towards his majesty. I took his hand and gently patted it. Let's start from the very beginning. My name is Hanji and this is Erwin. Um, hi, I'm Levi. Hello, Levi. Can you elaborate on who you are? Like, full name, what you do for a living, where you live, and do you have friends? Well, do the same after you. Is that okay? I smiled. Yeah, I can do that. Um, my name is Levi Ackerman. I live in the streets with my friends. More like family, Isabel and Falcon. I, we still have things to survive and where are they? His majesty looked at me with eyes that held worry. I patted his head. It's okay, I'll tell you when we're finished with our little introductions. My name is Hanji Zoe. I lived in a small village in Kamala Village. I worked for the queen and I have too many friends to count. But my best friend is Oren and you at Levi. I laughed and dared to poke his nose. When his majesty didn't snap at me, I smiled. He just stared at me weirdly. I couldn't help but feel honored to see this side of my queen. My name is Oren Smith. I have lived in the main city of Sheena, and I serve the queen's crown as his knight. And also my friends are you, your majesty, and Hanji. Oren gave him a knowing smile. I could tell how happy he was to tell us that we were all friends. Okay. Okay, you guys thought I was the queen. His highness arched a brow at us. No, your highness, you are the queen, I explained. But that isn't possible. I was abandoned and lived in the streets my whole life. Your majesty, stop. Just call me Levi. Okay, Levi. I couldn't help but smile. It's 12.49. Your relative took you out of the streets at the end of the month in 12.45. In 12.48 in the first month, you were wed to the king, his highness, Aaron Yeager of Sheena. We waited patiently while Levi tried to process all of that information for a moment. Then a sarcastic smile painted his face. I'm the queen. That's right, Edwin confirmed. I'm the queen. <laughs> then he burst out laughing. It took us off guard. Levi's past was not a secret, and it was my job as his servant to get to know him more than anything else and to serve him better. But now, based on how he acted, I'm afraid that I had a lot more to learn about him. Where are Isabel and Falcon? He asked, smiling genuinely. They've got to hear this. Levi, your friends. I bit my lower lip, unsure of what really happened to them. In the end, I decided to choose the save it option. They passed away. 
And just like that, Levi's positive aura shattered. What? When? How? During the winters of 1245, your relative was able to save you, but your friends had already passed away when they arrived. Levi was silent for a moment, then tears started to stream from his cheeks. Levi covered his face as he wept. I took a deep breath and patted his back. I knew it was not easy to lose your loved ones, but for me, I was honored to work for the queen when nobody dared. Seeing my queen in such a state only feared my loyalty to him. Maybe Levi is not a cruel, cold, and ruthless. Maybe he was just sad. I had to fix this. But, I said in a cheery voice that made him slightly jump. You were happily married to a great alpha. I didn't say great because he's the queen. But, because he is really caring and loves you with all his heart. Really? Levi sniffed and wiped his face. Hanji, Orin whispered at me, and I just smiled at him. Orin's blue eyes were wide before a smile lit upon his lips. That is right. Yes, and you have a baby, I almost squealed. Crown Prince Raphael. I never imagined having a kid. Levi muttered to himself. All of us didn't imagine you having a kid, but you're a good mother and you love your family very much. So, I live in the palace now? Levi finished wiping his face, a small smile once again back on his lips. Yes, and every evening you love to stay in the pavilion and drink Earl Grey. Oren added, That seems like a dream. You guys are not tricking me or anything, right? Never. We have devoted our life to you, all queen. I spoke out excitedly. Okay. <laughs> he chuckled before looking down at his hands. I'm the queen, and I have a family. Yes, but we must not tell the king or anyone about your memory, I instructed. Why? Levi brows furrowed in confusion. The king will be devastated to hear what happened to you. It will not be good. And the bandits that ambushed us, my queen, I recall that you recognized them. Oren scooted closer. I I don't remember. Levi breathed out. I don't I don't remember the ambush or anything after the start of the month of nineteen forty five. It's okay, I can brew some herbs that are beneficial for your memory. Maybe you can recall them. I took his hand again and patted it. For now, we need to get you home safely. The king will be glad to see you back. Wait, wait. Back to the palace to meet the king? I have no idea what to do as a queen or a wife. Levi explained. It's okay, we'll teach you. I smiled. This time, things will be alright. End of chapter 1